Do you ever shoot the enemy first and miraculously die after shooting five bullets into them only to die in what seems like one SMG bullet? Have you ever died feeling like you knew you definitely were around that corner? There's been a lot of talk about the matchmaking in Call of Duty, but today I want to talk about something arguably worse that also compounds on top of matchmaking to make for a worse and less consistent player experience. The servers. Call of Duty runs on 60 Hz or 60 tick per second servers. That means the servers check where the players are in game, their bullets, etc. 60 times per second. On Warzone, Rebirth, and larger multiplayer modes like Ground War, the servers are 22 tick, meaning they only update 22 times every second, with a game where every millisecond matters and guns having varying fire rates. The lower tick rate servers are very inconsistent and lead to packet loss more compared to the 60 tick multiplayer servers, the 6 vs 6 servers. There's desync or difference in what's going on on your side versus what the enemy is seeing based off platforms, there's desync based off player geographic location and their ISP routing, their internet service provider, and how each node in between you and the other player, which is a lot of different jumps, how that's all routed and everything. Whether or not the enemy or you is on Wi-Fi or not, there's also lag compensation in the game. They've never publicly disclosed just how strong it is. Do you have to have over 150 ping to get lag compensation? Does lag compensation work for a low ping player against a high ping player? Does it only work for somebody with high ping? They've never really discussed that with us. All these points from your PlayStation to your modem to a data center to the PlayStation network to the Call of Duty servers Back to the enemy player, 22 tick servers simply just lose way too much information. Earlier yesterday I was playing ground war and there was somebody who it seemed like they were like seconds ahead of me on the server or something. So I typed in the chat, where are you playing from? You have 206 ping. And he responded back, Brazil. So clearly, the, either the lag compensation or maybe... I was playing on a Brazilian server, but why would it show him having such high ping? I guess he would have lower ping to the server. I don't know. I don't think the ping numbers and everything in game are even accurate. It's a, it's actually been proven to not be accurate by battle nonsense. I just want to know exactly how strong the lag compensation is and what's the discrepancy between player ping that causes it to kick in or does it kick in because of desync? or packet loss, which I definitely don't think it does because it doesn't seem like it's helping with that. I don't think that anybody with a low ping or anybody with a real high ping should have an advantage over anybody necessarily. But at the same time, they shouldn't put some like AI set of rules in the background that like manipulates the shit and causes the connection to be janky just because you're going up against somebody who happens to be playing in your lobby from really far away. I know that Warzone and Call of Duty uses Amazon Web Services to host their servers. So basically they're getting all of the, their stuff handled externally. What I think that they would need to do in order to provide higher quality servers and better connections for everybody is to actually rent out data centers around different locations around the world, around the US, different countries in order to, to give higher tick rate servers. The problem is that doesn't make them more money. They're gonna go on doing the bare minimum as long as they can. I just find it kind of disappointing a company that's making so much money off microtransactions and game sales can't just put some of that money into their servers and their infrastructure 